if you have a loved one in long-term care or a nursing home, you're going to want to watch this video all the way to the end. And I will have a question for you at that point. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. It's been a while since I've done a long form video and I want to talk about an event. I've been hinting, hinting on this in the last few videos. This involves my wife and an incident that happened in the nursing home a few months ago. This is going to be hard for me to talk about because I'm, even though it's been resolved, I'm still upset over it. This is going to be in three parts. And you'll see all three parts today. And one of the working tiles I, come up, I came up with was get your damn hands off of her. But let's meet the players in this three-act play. First is Mary, my wife's roommate and the victim in all this. The next person is Bob, the attacker, if you would. Uh, a newer resident to the nursing home. Third player is my wife, Karen, a stroke survivor, a resident of this long-term care facility where she's, staying, where she's staying. You can see her on a YouTube short I did with her on June 24th, so that's out there. So we're wishing somebody a happy birthday. Um, and the final player, main player, and this is me, the reluctant hero, if you would. Uh, also, too, there's a ca cast of hundreds, basically the residents of the facility she's at. Okay, let's talk about the meeting. Bob, I wrote notes, so here I go. Bob was a recent addition to this healthcare center. He was a gentleman in a wheelchair. I want to say he was in his 50s, maybe 60s. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. He's missing part of one leg. And he would wheel up and down the halls all day uh, in his workout, I guess. And every woman he ran into, he'd go and say, I love you. I love you. I should have been suspicious on that. But being a facility where people are a little different, I just attribute it to old age. Now, Mary and Bob met, I'm assuming, in the dining hall. Mary... Mary goes down to the dining hall for her meals, and I would usually be in the room with Karen, and I would catch them on the comeback from lunch. Uh, they, would, they would both roll down the hallway, Mary being in a wheelchair also, and they would congregate outside the door to the room Mary and my wife shared. And they would huddle there. Conversation was usually fairly innocent, but unfortunately that would evolve in a not a good way over the next few weeks. Act two. As I as I did further visits, there would be comments by some of the staff that Mary was developing quite a reputation in the nursing home. And there was hint there was innuendo in it. I won't go into the specifics that was said. So uh, in my conclusion, Mary and Bob were engaging in coitus. Um, question was where. I didn't know where. I assumed they were hiding out somewhere in an empty room or something along that line. But after another visit, they were Mary and Bob were congregating out in the hallway. Karen said to me she did not want Bob in the room. And I'm thinking, okay, he shouldn't be in the room to start with. Little did I know, but we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, then on a Saturday in May, it happened. Once again, the lovebirds were congregating outside the doorway. and I could see both of them. They, you know, it was the way they met, the way they huddled in the doorway. If I had to get out quickly, I couldn't. I'd have to jump over them. Um, and I saw Bob grab Mary in the right breast. And then he commented, and I apologize for this, but this is what he said. He says, you have such beautiful tits. Mary told him to stop. But he continued, 
but added the statement, well, don't you love me? Again, Mary told him to stop. Still, he was still fondling her. And it was at that point I had enough, and I intervened. I jumped up, and I stood over both in the doorway, and I said, the lady said you, to take your hands off of her. Very loud voice. And he was denying he was doing anything as he's pulling his hand back. And I kept going at him. I kept yelling at him, telling him, you don't touch women in that way. And he kept denying he was doing anything. Um, but he also kind of knew I had him. And it was at that point staff finally congregated. Um, Mary and Bob were separated, and they were sent to different corners of the wing that my wife was staying in. I sat back down. Karen looked at me, smiled, and said, thank you. And a few minutes later, one of the nurse's aides came by and informed me that I was out of line. I don't think I was. Because Bob has mental health issues. That's supposed to make me feel better? The reason I stood was not necessarily to protect Mary, it was to protect Karen. Because my fear was, and as I found out later, the two of them were engaging in sex in the room with Karen six feet away. And I was not happy with that. And so a few minutes later, the lady who was in charge of the nursing staff came down, and basically she told me if a patient consents to sex, or if a resident consents to sex, there's nothing they can do about it. And my reply was, Karen has no say in this. Besides, I also told them, I don't think Mary has the ability to consent. And so it got left at that. And I decided at that point I was going to pick it up on Monday when, there were all, the, when all the people in charge were going to be back. And that takes us into Act 3. Okay, Act 3, what I call the aftermath, what happened then. I met with the head of the facility that morning. And I restated my version of events. I was reminded about the consent issue. And I questioned what rights Karen had as someone sharing the room with Mary. Because as Karen expressed to me, she not want Bob in there. And I also reiterated my main concern that Bob would all of a sudden move his interest from Mary to Karen. Karen can't defend herself. Her stroke was very severe. She can't move around freely. She's only got she's got the use of her right arm, which is away from the which is towards the wall and away from the edge of the bed. So, things I was promised after this meeting, uh, they would look at moving Karen into another room, and I was okay with that. And staff would also be retrained on this type of issue. Uh, at that point, I considered things a win, and I moved on. I went to visit Karen. Normally, I would walk by Bob, because his room is kind of on a corner. I didn't see him that morning. So I assumed that you had moved to another wing of the building. And things were, I visited, it was a good visit with Karen. I went home, made myself some lunch, sat down. I uh, was going to do some work on the computer. And then I got a phone call. It's the local police department. Uh, they call me. They wanted me to make a statement over the phone. I said, okay. I restated the whole story again. Restated my concerns about all this. And at the at, at the close of the phone call, they thanked me, for, mainly for filling in pieces that were missing because apparently the nursing home called the police department and what they said to them did not make a lot of sense. Um, and they would also let me know if I needed to do additional statements or testimony. And I was okay with that. And I didn't think any more about that until a month later. Phone rings again. This time it's county social services. Again, asking me for a statement, so I restate everything again, and I was thanked, and they would let me know if additional information was needed. I haven't heard anything back at this point. All I know is Bob is no longer at the facility. I'm just glad I can visit frequently in my retirement 
to keep an eye on things. I was really sad that this whole thing with Mary had gotten that far. Um, nobody's talked to me about it, and that's fine. Uh, they can't, I think, in a lot of cases. I think there's legal ramifications. I think the lady or the nurse's aide that told me that Bob had mental health issues was probably over the line uh, in terms of legal. Uh, but everybody's happy. Mary talks to me, so she's either forgotten about this or is over it or is happy I stepped in. I don't know. But to conclude all this, I have a question for you guys. Do you have a loved one in a nursing home or long-term care? How often do you visit them? And do you really know what goes on every day? Uh, I'm there about every other day, so I get to watch things. You know, staff is friendly to me. I'm friendly to them. I brought them a box of peaches, uh, Palisade peaches, a few weeks ago, just to, uh, you know, no hard feelings type of thing. But what do you all think? Uh, this was hard to put together. This was hard to talk about, but I felt it needed to be said only because boomer generation is starting to work its way into these places. Um, the early end, I'm the late end of the boomer, the boomer generation being born in 1959. So at some point I could find myself in a place like that. I hope not, um, but you never know. You make plans and God laughs. So let me know your thoughts. Thank you for listening. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see some comments down the road. Talk to you later.